welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to do a little unboxing and swatching of the paints in this little envelope, which I got during the watercolor sale from Jackson's Art in the UK. I don't plan to do very many haul and unboxing videos on this channel because I already have lots of paint, but every year during the Jackson's Art watercolor sale, I do treat myself using my affiliate income as a birthday gift. Um, so today I'm trying out some new paints from Old Holland, a brand that I've never tried before. So if you're new here, my name is Lee Angold, I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator, and on this channel I share illustration tips and techniques uh, for watercolor. Um, so here I've got my first paint, this is PB16 Caribbean Blue. And then again, also by Old Holland, I've got Golden Baroque Red, PO65. Uh, this is a fairly unique pigment to this brand. Um, another fairly rare pigment, Reveninga Yellow Deep, is made with PY83, and it is a sort of Indian yellow color, a warm yellow. Um, Royal Purple Lake is PV42 Quinacridone Pink, which is a fairly rare color and also one that I've never tried before. And then I also got myself a Schmincke Perline Green. This is a color I'm familiar with, but I needed to stock up. So on. last week over on my blog and social media, I posted some swatches that I painted from a little travel watercolor palette. Um, and a lot of people really liked the look of the swatches and asked me how I got these, this very clean look on my watercolor swatches. So I'm just going to demonstrate with these new paints that I got from Jackson's um, how I swatch my watercolors. So. The real simple trick is that I got some really thin little tape rolls um, from Amazon. I'll leave the link down below. And so I just make some little tape lines so then I can be quite messy with my swatching and it still comes out with nice clean clear lines. So now I'm going to just get started with swatching out my colors. So very first we've got PY83 Reveninga Yellow Deep. Um, so again, this is a sort of Indian yellow type tone. It's a very warm orangey yellow. Um, you can't really see it because my framing is wrong, but um, it's also quite transparent, which I quite like in a yellow. Um, so that's promising. I've been looking for a warm yellow that's transparent ever since PY153 was discontinued, that's nickel dioxine or new gamboge. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Doing a little d diffusion test. Now the one downside to this color is, although it is available from pi pigment manufacturers, it's not produced by very many paint companies. Next, I've got PO65, um, and so this is another uh, color that's exclusive to Old Holland. Um, so this is uh, a color that everyone who's tried it has been very positive about, but I've heard many dis different descriptions where some people describe it as almost a burnt sienna color. Handprint.com says it's the color of clotted blood. And that's surprising to me because although I like this color very much and I agree with that, um, it doesn't look like those things to me. So to me, this looks like a strong orange that you could use in a bright colors palette, but it does have just a little hint of earthiness. Um, so that's an interesting combination. It's like a bright earth tone. Next, I'm trying Royal Purple Lake. 
Um, this is PV42, which is more commonly known as quinacridone pink. Several other companies offer this, but this is the first time that I'm trying this pigment. Um, it is definitely a very pink color. Um, I was hoping, because Old Holland is known as um, for, for having very strong saturation, that this would be a very saturated color, and my impression is that it's not very much at all. I had a lot of trouble uh, getting a strong saturation uh, in the mass tone. Um, it was actually quite a weak color uh, given that it's a quinacridone and quinacridones tend to be quite strong. Otherwise, in tone and undertone, it is similar to one of my favorite colors, uh, which is quinacridone magenta PR122. However, I think I'll be sticking to my old favorite rather than switching to this. Um, and then the last color in my set is PB16 Caribbean Blue. Now PB16 is one of my favorite pigments. I have it from a number of different brands. So this allows me to compare um, similar, or sorry, the same pigment uh, from different brands with this new brand. Um, and I'm just gonna do my quick diffusion test on the quinacridone pink first. Um, but whereas the other pigments here are new to me, this one is an old favorite. Uh, this, uh, it's thalo turquoise, but um, they call it Caribbean blue. And again, I'm quite surprised and disappointed. I had heard that Old Holland, because of their binder, they use rabbit skin glue and all sorts of things that are supposed to hold more pigment. Um, that they were had very saturated colors, and certainly with these last two, which are a quinacridone and a thalo, um, they certainly don't seem to. To me, this really just looks like um, like a, a fairly weak version. I, it's almost like a student paint. I really could not get a strong saturation, especially on the first pass. So um, that was a little disappointing, really. So now I'm just going to do a very quick little mixing chart, so I've sped this up. I do have a primary triad, a CMY cyan magenta yellow triad here, so I can mix some bright secondary colors. Um, however, because my yellow is a very warm yellow, uh, you'll see that my greens that I can mix end up being pretty muted, but I do have a range of uh, strong oranges, particularly with the addition of that golden baroque red. Um, and I also have uh, some really nice purple, which you'll see in a moment. And then this one surprised me because I didn't think that this was going to mix anything resembling a black um, from the descriptions of the colors. Uh, but I did actually manage to get quite a dark color, at least in the mixing chart. Um, so here you'll see I'm taping up this little square on the side of my paper. Um, and so this is where I'm going to try to mix that uh, black again. But first, before I do that, I do want to try glazing. So um, I had heard about Old Holland paints that they lift up very easily. Um, if you go check out uh, Shada from Sadie Saves the Day, she made a video, I'll link it down below, where she just repeatedly lifted up colors um, and found that they didn't really layer at all. So I was pleasantly surprised at this step because all of these colors actually glazed quite cleanly. Um, there's quite a bit of transparency, they don't lift up the color underneath. So that was a pleasant surprise. Um, although I will say that even with glazing, I was hoping that the glaze would bring out some of the stronger colors in this quinacridone and this thalo. Um, and they did, they are brighter, but I would say especially the thalo, the Caribbean blue is still just nowhere near as saturated as other PB16 paints that I've seen. So. I don't know, Old Holland is 
known to be a fairly saturated paint, and at least in this case, it, it's just not. So now I'm trying to mix that black again, um, and I'm having trouble balancing it. It's just turning into a sort of mucky gray. So I don't know if this is because I'm working from wet paints. Maybe if I let them dry and re-wet them, then the consistency would be a bit better and I could get more controlled saturation. I'm also going to try the Schmincke paint that I bought. Um, now this is a brand I'm familiar with and a pigment I'm familiar with, but I think it's nice to have a dark in a palette, especially when, um, as in the case of the Royal Purple Lake and the Caribbean Blue, your colors are quite light. Um, it's difficult to mix a dark, so uh, I'm also going to mix all of these with the Perlene Green. So you can see I got a mossy green there with the yellow. Um, with the Golden Baroque Red, it makes a range of nice browns. This is a deep plummy color. I should be able to mix a black with these two colors. Um, and then this teal is just incredibly stunning. Um, so now I'm going to try to mix that black. And again, you can see because the pink is so weak, I have a lot of trouble mixing a black there. All right, so now I'm going to try lifting these colors up at the top. Um, so again, Old Holland is reputed to just lift up very easily. Um, something about their formulation. Uh, they use rabbit skin glue, it's supposed to lift more easily off the paper. Um, and I had mixed results with this. So this first yellow, it does lift, and yellows do tend to be staining colors. So um, you know, it has lifted a little, but it's taken some scrubbing and it doesn't really want to go. So. Um, it's hard to tell whether this is because of the it's a very staining pigment or uh, whether the binder is not really doing what what other people have described but you know I lifted it a little but it still left quite a mark now with this golden baroque red that's a completely separate issue and you can just see this I'm just gonna dab it once and you can see it's almost back to white just on the first pass. And then with the tiniest bit of scrubbing, I can get it right back to white. So that was really impressive because I've never seen that in watercolor. Now, I don't do a lot of lifting in my own work, um, but it's still an interesting feature and something that somebody might really be attracted to if they want a watercolor that does that. Um, the quinacridone isn't really lifting. Old Holland is one of the most expensive brands in the world, so um, I've, I haven't bought them before for that reason. Um, they have limited pigment documentation. They are difficult to buy, and when you can buy them, they're expensive. So um, they haven't been terribly tempting. I was hoping for something really unique here. And certainly in the case of the quinacridone and the Caribbean blue, um, they're nice paints, but they're not anything special. And in fact, they're quite a bit weaker than other brands that I use regularly, like Schmincke, Da Vinci, Daniel Smith, etc. Um, so I'm just giving this one last shot. But then in a moment, you'll see the fun part where I get to peel off all of these little bits of tape um, and reveal the finished product. Um, so while I do this, I have a question for you. Um, have you tried Old Holland watercolor paints? Uh, do you enjoy them? Uh, and if you haven't tried them, would you want to try them? Let me know in the comments below. 
Also, while you're there, it would be really helpful for this channel if you could hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you'll know when my next content is uploaded. And just to finish up, here are the scans of my finished color swatches with uh, my comments. Um, here's a close up. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye and I'll see you next week.